this paper um, was given to the U.S. government guys in 83 and was accepted. And um, it shows that, of course, your Tesla coil or a static generator or an RF generation system can't cause these kind of effects. But in combination, somehow, they cause some type of um, second type of um, distortion. In in uh, literally shielding dimensional or time distortion of some sort, some type of mi- mild time distortion, but heavy gravitational distortion, where ob- objects become weightless. Some of the objects would actually float, and one could actually take photographs of these things floating in the air. Just floating there, sitting there, uh, floating, and you could actually take a instead of using video, you just take a picture of it. Uh. This is just so absolutely incredible. <laughs> I, I guess how many people just flat, even even though they see it, you know, even though they see it, well, they just don't believe it. I don't know. People get very excited uh, with it. Um, I had a, a defense contracts lawyer friend who was just in Vancouver for a short time, who who kept talking to me, and I was trying to show him that the results were going on, but he said. I said, well, I'll just shut it off now, okay? And he, he said, this is the most exciting thing I've ever seen. Here's $100. <laughs> Here's $100? He wasn't even looking in the target zone. Yeah. <laughs> That's how some people react. Um, others, you know, the scientific teams will be very careful, look for any kind of trickery, and seal the area off, and then run all the tests and videotape on every angle, and use uh, videos and Super 8 millimeter film, as such as the Canadian government guys did. Dr. L.A. Kuhn, head of the Scientific Technical Intelligence Agency. Yeah, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, some of the still photographs for those. Uh, here's a chunk of metal that is completely distorted by the levitation process. It's a big piece of metal, mm-hmm. and then uh, it, it is indeed, uh, it's fractured actually. It broke, it, it looks like it almost broke in half. Mm-hmm. The energy from that has been calculated uh, by scientists analyzed by Max Planck Institute, Fraunhofer, and many of the German labs to come from within the material outward, causing that kind of fracturing. Actually, it looks like uh, the fracturing occurred from inside coming out, the way, it's, the way the material is pushed away. That's right. They did extensive tests um, in Germany on these things. and um, oh, That's very interesting. That might indicate that whatever the field is doing, mm-hmm. it's disturbing the molecular structure of the material itself and the and the change is it comes from within in this case that's right there's been extensive tests done by Yikes. George Hathaway of Toronto University um, and some of the national laboratories um, Lawrence Livermore did tests found these kind of same results they find actually impurities coagulate right into pure metals within the sample really and you do an SEM on it, scanning electron microscope on it, X-ray diffraction analysis, fluorescent analysis. And, of course, you know, they share the results with me, which is in why it's so imperative to have videos and documentation. And you sure do. Second photograph down, still photograph, is a metal slab mm-hmm. with holes in it, uh, one hole on each side, a big metal slab, and by God, impaled inside of this metal slab, and I mean impaled, is a knife. Uh, you can just sort of, well, you can see the knife coming out of the edge, and you can sort of see it impaled in the metal. Now, how in God's name could that happen? Sometimes we, when we're doing experiments, we put a, a sample on top of another sample. Yes. And in this particular case, this sample just floated into the material and froze there. So what we yeah, did, but it became part of it. it. Became part of it, yes. And then what we do is um, machine it down to try and see what is what, in there. <laughs> what's in there? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, do you remember the description in the Philadelphia experiment where horribly uh, toward the end, human beings were halfway embedded into the ship? Yep. That reminds me of the piece of wood inside that metal block, which is coming back from New York. That's that's a that's a wood spoon in there. 
Uh, it's a block of wood that floated into the metal. The floated And I think I sent... <laughs> I should be getting that back from Dan Aykroyd's show thing that collapsed. Okay, hold on. Stay right where you are. I'm Art Bell with John Hutchins. you got to see this. I'm telling you. You've got a computer. Get to my website, artbell.com. Seven days of savings every month. GNC. Live well. All right. Uh, back now to Canada and John Hutchinson. Uh, there's a gold cylinder here, and it literally is turned to jelly by this field. Uh, what kind of cylinder was this? Oh, Art, it was a um, stainless steel, non-magnetic stainless steel bar, approximately six inches long by about three inches in diameter. Right. And during one of the tests, that was actually quite a long kind of dis destruction or jelly. It turned to jelly. It's quite long in its duration. And I was able to also capture that right on video with the masters. Like, the masters really show this stuff better than um, perhaps what video I sent down, down to you there. But um, um, the gold is some kind of discoloration of the stainless steel. Undetermined. That one was not analyzed. I have maybe, oh, 80% unanalyzed samples. Uh-huh. The rest were, maybe it's even higher, higher than that, but the rest were analyzed and tested. All right. Um, some, some showing actually material that doesn't exist on Earth, which is kind of interesting. That uh, really? Thing, alloy, alloy material. That, so, um, so how do you speculate that could have happened? Well, a massive distortion of the, of the uh, atomic structure. Again, feeling that it deals with time and, and gravi gravity. Um, I, I feel that I feel that um, everything has a gravity field around it, and that these gravity fields is produced by some kind of subatomic reaction. Have you ever put any timekeeping device in the field? No, not yet. That's been suggested. We never got around to a lot of good things that we should have done. Um, do you still have the equipment that produced these results? Uh, no. Um, you don't? The Canadian government seized all that when I was in Germany, when I was having it shipped to Germany. What? Yes, they see. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> why were you going, to, first of all, why were you going to ship all of the equipment to Germany? as a matter of interest? Well, I had an offer from a team in Germany and a team in Austria that financed everything. And I really wanted, to, by this time, to get out of uh, the group that is involved with who were connected to Boeing. And I felt there was going to be a major takeover, and there's, they were suggesting that I get back into the military to study this effect as a psychotronic thing. Uh -huh. So I put my dug my heels in there, and I felt I don't want to go through this route again because you can't talk about it, you can't be sort of a showman, which I am in some ways. And um, the German team were very supportive, sent large amounts of money over. We managed to get some of it into shipping containers within two hours of raiding the lab, which was locked up on me. They raided the lab? I did, we did, with armed guards, moving people. But two hours into that move, uh, the police came, Yes. And also the people that were connected to Boeing came. Yes. And stopped it. So um, a lady friend of mine, uh, Ian Gazda, um, well, she uh, is a filmmaker from Hollywood, um, got lawyers to sign the lab over to her as a movie set. Mm. By this time, things are getting so complex. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry. Back up. I okay. uh, Under <laughs> what... Under what authority did the police seize what you had, or or Boeing, for that matter? Um, what authority they would have to seize that at that time? Uh, basically, when the lab was in operation, I was president of my own company, Axon General Systems. So they got rid of me, fired me as the president. Uh huh. And um, this is getting kind of sticky, so that I couldn't even get into my own lab. So the German group. At the same time, in Germany, were preparing for me to move there, 
and uh, was decided just to literally charge the place 